<laughs> what is up my fellow warbirds, aka the War Eagle here, and I'm back with another video. This time we're taking a look at three different dev blogs. And guys, I'm sorry, but right now I'm very upset. I was about to head into work, and I ended up having to cancel going to work because... Somebody got a hold of my credit card information and decided to go on a little shopping spree. So, I'm having to deal with that. So if I sound pissed off, that's the reason why. But, three new dev blogs have come up for update 1.93, so let's take a look at those and try to forget about it. So, something I have actually been wanting for a while in this game. The KA-50 Black Shark. This is honestly one of the most interesting helicopters ever produced. And it's just because of the two tandem um, rotors. I mean, that's just, you know, unique in its design. So let's take a look at it. The legendary KA-50 will be joining the premium roster for the USSR Russia helicopter tree. KA-50 Black Shark, attack helicopter, USSR Russia Rank 6 Premium Pack. Pros include excellent flight characteristics, armor, cockpit, and some internal nodes, ATGMs, AAMs, and even bombs. Some cons are the 30mm has limited range of motion and one crew member. Alright, so something I want to point out about this video, this is actually the second video they posted. If you go watch, if you well you can't even watch the original one now, but the original one had the helicopter shooting down what looked like a AH-64 prototype, so maybe this update we're also getting the Apache. Just have to wait and see. So anyway, historical background: the KA-50 is the first and, as of now, the only helicopter in War Thunder that has a coaxial main rotor design. The design has several advantages over traditional tail rotor design, including improved stability ca characteristics. Sorry. <coughs> Maneuvering and cargo capacity. Upon reaching its maximum speed of over 300 kph, the Black Shark is able to carry 2,300 kilograms of ordnance. The most notable feature of this helicopter includes the wide selection of suspended armament and possible combinations thereof the cockpit armor and the 30mm cannon with its HEF and AP rounds. So here's some wallpaper of it. Again, this is actually something I've been looking forward to for a while because it's just a, such an interesting design. I'll go into my opinions though on it in just a minute though. Alright, in our game, the KA-50 will be a premium rank 6 helicopter in the USSR Russian tech tree. The Black Shark will prove to be the perfect vehicle for many pilots thanks to its range of excellent characteristics. Sorry, range of excellent characteristics one would expect in the top of the line machine. There's a lot to like here. There's a lot to like here. Great speed, responsive control, decent cockpit defenses against AA machine gun fire, and of course a complete arsenal for taking out any type of target. The 30mm cannon installed on the right side may not have full 360 degree firing arc, but to compensate for that it can be loaded with a choice of either high explosive fragmentation or armor piercing shells. Its destructive power is more than enough to send anti-air guns, light ATGM carriers, and helicopters back to the hangar. But again, if not many people use the machine gun in ground RB, so is that really a con? Eh. If you're planning an all-out assault on the enemy aircraft, be sure to stock up on air defense system ILGA-15, which has the best rank among the air-to-air -air missiles in the entire game. The Viker ATGMs serve as the primary weapon for taking down armor targets, and you can bring a total of 12 of those with you to battle alongside other ordnance choices, of course. This new generation missiles can easily take out state-of-the-art tanks fitted with ERA systems from a distance of 10,000 meters. The four suspended armament points also allow pilots to bring to combat things such as unguided rockets up to 1,000 kilograms of bombs and gun pods containing 23 millimeters. Basically the stuff that would keep enemy tank commanders occupied and sweating. 
All right, so my thoughts on the KA-50. Like I said, I'm really e excited to see this in-game, but as a pr rank 6 premium, let's be honest, this is a rank 7 premium. This is going to be just pretty much a rank 7. And, you know, a lot of people... One thing I will say about War Thunder is, for the most part, it is not pay to win. The one exceptions I will say is helicopters. Now, in Ground RB, you know, yes, it does have the 10 kilometer range rockets, but the question is, are they hand guided or are they like the um, Hellfire missiles where you have to pretty much lock onto a place and then keep the target still? Because if it's the latter, then okay, fine, I can, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue, you know, to eat, it's, it'll be good for taking out campers or AA guns, you know, fair enough, but if it's hand-guided, I can honestly see that being a problem with, with that said, though, for ground RP, helicopters are kind of iffy. We all know that right now the, um, anti-air systems are just overpowered, so this thing might balance it out, I don't know, because really, in reality, there's just not many maps that actually favor helicopters. Now, if there are some, in some cases, if there's no AA systems, then the helicopters reign supreme, which, you know, that tends to happen. But as soon as somebody brings out an AA gun, it's pretty much game over for most helicopters, with the exception of a few maps, such as, you know, um... Sinai, Middle East, but for the most part, the AAs reign. This thing, I don't know. I honestly will have to wait and see how it performs. Just, you know, this is something that I don't know. With a, air, with helicopter enduring confrontation, though. Oh boy, this thing is going to absolutely massacre. Helicopter Enduring Confrontation is, like I said, it's one of the few things I will say in War Thunder that absolutely is pay to win. The better the helicopter, and as long as it has air-to-air -air missiles, they will always win. So, like, it's just one of those things I will have to wait and see. With this said, though, I would absolutely like it, and I will definitely be trying it out once the dev server hits. So, you know, like I said, this is just something I would like to absolutely see and try. It's just one of those things, we'll have, in my opinion, we'll have to wait and see. But I'm excited for it. So, next up, we have the Centurion Action X, or the Chief Tyrion. The Centurion Action X is an experimental variant of the Centurion main battle tank developed in the early 1950s to feature the newly designed Mantleless turret. Reinforcing the high, higher ranks of the British Ground Forces tree, the Centurion Action X will soon make its way to War Thunder, arriving as part of Update 1.93. A modified late variant of the Centurion tank, fitted with experimental Mantleless turret, offering improved protection. Alright, so pros and cons. Good turret protection, quick firing cannon, Premium bonus. You know it's... <sighs> Golly, I feel bad. It, okay, so it is a rank 4. Yeah, rank 4 for Britain. And you know the meme, Britain suffers. It And it's a true meme. It, they really do. You know it's bad when pros are premium bonuses. Cons are average mobility and limited ammunition choices. <sighs> Brit Gaijin just hates Britain, don't they? In War Thunder, the Centurion Action X will be a new premium vehicle coming soon to rank 4 of the British Ground Forces tree with the release of 193. Unlike its premium tree, its premium tree neighbors, the, ST, the STRV-81 and Centurion AVRE, the Action X offers another set of unique traits which makes it stand out from its peers. The main features that make the Action X one of the more unique variants of the Centurion tank is undoubtedly its turret, a highly unusual one for this. The, the turret of the Action X is so-called Mantleless turret, which 
some tankers in War Thunder may know from the FV4202 and Chieftain tanks. Similarly to those vehicles, the turret on the Action X very thick, features very thick and highly sloped features, giving it decent ballistic protection. In fact, without a slope effect, the toughest parts of the Action X reach up to 240 millimeters in thickness. Such formidable, such formid, formidable, <laughs> I can't talk today. Armor protection will no doubt present itself as a tough nut to crack for most opponents and even capable of giving some potent early Cold War ammunition a good run for its money. Fun fact, although ultimately unsuccessful, experience gained from the development of the Action X was later utilized in the development of the FV-4202 and Chieftain tanks. However, still being a Chieftain tank at its core, aspiring commanders of this machine should bear in mind the weakness typical asso typically associated with the Centurion those being average mobility and comparably weak hull protection. In addition, fitting, being fitted with the QF 20 pounder 84 millimeter cannon means that commanders will only have a limited suit of ammunition types available to them. As such, a good gunnery skills will be vital in defeating the opponent, especially more heavily armored ones as e every shot needs to count. Fortunately, for those less experienced tankers, the, exper the excellent rate of fire for the 20-pounder cannon may make up for the occasional bot shot sent down range, especially range since it allows quick fire adjustments. I cannot talk today. As a result, tankers will be best off utilizing the Action X as a regarded as a rear guard unit, further increasing its effectiveness by cleverly positioning the vehicle in a hold down position. That way, commanders will minimize the risk of less protected hull elements being hit, while only exposing the turn as the most effective part of their armor, thus maximizing protection. The Centurion Action X will become available for purchase to all players in the game for Golden Eagles following the release of the next major update, and will not only allow them to speed up progression towards higher rank, but will also grant them ownership over a highly unique piece of British tank development history. That's all for today, Warriors. However, make sure stay tuned for news, and we will continue to reveal more information on what lies in wait for you coming in Update 1.93. Until then, happy hunting. So yeah, you know, just another British tank. I mean, I say that, I, but I don't know much about Britain. You know, some of y'all may actually be looking forward to this, and I'm sorry I couldn't provide, you know, something more chipper. But, you know, just knowing how Gaijin treats the British in this game, I'm not expecting good, much things from this. Now for something we know that is going to be loved by the developers and by the players. The BMP-3. A top rank light armored vehicle in the Soviet line, armed with a 100mm gun and a 30mm autocannon. Ooh. In the late 70s, the. That factory started developing a new infantry fighting vehicle to replace the BMP 1. The vehicle got a new experimental light tank chassis. The first models were supposed to be equipped with a 30 millimeter cannon as its primary weapon as well as a grenade launcher, machine guns, and ATGM launchers. The government considered the vehicle's armaments to be insufficient and said that it offered no real advantage over the BMP 1. In order to correct the situation, the Tula-based engineers suggested a new turret with the following armament. A rifled 100mm semi-automatic cannon, also an ATGM launcher, a 30mm cannon, and a PKT machine gun. The vehicle successfully underwent testing in, th in this state and in 1987 was accepted into the Soviet Army and designated BMP-3. Since then, this combat vehicle has served, has been, has been used by Russia and over 10 countries, uh, 
with especially large quantities being purchased by the United Arab Emirates, where vehicles were chosen over the Bradley and Warrior. The BMP3, the B, I cannot talk today. The BMP3 is consistently being upgraded and is still considered to be one of the best combat vehicles in the world. Pros and cons include excellent pairing of the 130 millimeter gun with ATGMs and a 30 millimeter cannon with a high rate of fire. Can travel over water, pretty decent mobility. Cons include weak, um, high explosive anti tank protection and a 100 millimeter cannon which fires shells with considerable projectile drop. Ooh, so the cannon is both a pro and a con. Ooh. In War Thunder, the BMP-3 will be available at rank 7 in the USSR Russian Armored Vehicle Research Line. The vehicle's combat role in War Thunder will be active scouting, including across aquatic obstacles since it is amphibious. You guys know I like my amphibious tanks. And will be able to fire while moving over water. The BMP has a crew of 5. Its armor is shrapnel resistant and can withstand frontal hits of armor plating tracer rounds of the 30 caliber. The vehicle is quite mobile. It has a power to weight ratio of 25 horsepower per ton and a maximum speed of 72 kph. What is that in miles per hour? Somebody in the in the comments convert it for me. Its 100 millimeter primary cannon can fire HEF rounds and even more valuable in War Thunder. Laser-guided anti-tank missiles with armor-piercing characteristics of up to 75 millimeters on normal impact. This cannon can feature. Uh, this cannon has a feature that's worth considering: the complex ballistics of its shells and rather low ATGM flight speed. In other words, on one hand, we don't have any fast kinetic or guided heat rounds, but on the other hand, you can fire behind cover, and the ATGMs are a little easier to control. A 30 millimeter automatic cannon paired with the primary gun has a high explosive incendiary tracer armor piercing and APCR shells that can take down enemy helicopters and light tanks. The BMP-3 in War Thunder fills a niche for the top ranking light tank in the Soviet line. Vehicles of this class can't compete with tanks in terms of survival. Vehicles of this class cannot compete with tanks in terms of survivability, but they cost fewer spawn points and are more mobile. The BMP-3 is a splendid addition to top-ranking setup for the arcade mode of or combined battles. The BMP-3 ace in the hole is its amphibious nature, as well as its successful combination of high-caliber gun with ATGMs and fast 30mm. Soviet tank commanders have needed a vehicle like the BMP-3 in top-ranking battles for a long time now, and the release of Update 1.93, the high, higher ranks of the Soviet ground forces will be more varied in terms of vehicles. We can't wait for the update to be released, and we are currently preparing more new awesome vehicle announcements for War Thunder Update 1.93. Thanks for playing. So yeah, Russia's getting a new light tank. <laughs> Is this starting to become a meme where every update Russia gets a new light tank? So yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised this is they haven't added this thing yet. Um, but yeah, so you know, with it being Russian, it's going to be good. So yeah, um, what are you guys looking forward to most so far? This is, of course, still only three dev blogs. We still haven't even seen other dev blogs, you know. There's still rumors about the electric, the electric lightning, um, the mirage, things like that. We we haven't even seen anything for air other than the KA50. Um, let let me let guys know in the comments what you guys are most looking forward to so far. Um, if you guys haven't already, click the subscribe button. Don't forget, there's also the link to the Discord in the description below. And as always, I hope y'all have a good day.